to. <laughs> oh, here we are. Was Great. that really live? That was really live. Oh, that's good. <laughs> One of my favorite songs. I hope you guys like it too. Yeah, I was. I, was, I uh, can. I can do the whole thing. <laughs> I, was, I was showing Andy the uh, the new the new music and and hit uh, for the mics to turn on. Uh, before I told him we're not live, but yeah, said, yeah, he said we're not live, and then I started the... rapping Easy E, and <laughs> he said, "Oh, we are live." Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so he's got everything working today, <laughs> too well, and still fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, technically, that was you that messed that one up. No, no, I might, no. I might get the bag of dicks. Nothing messed this up time. about that with me. <laughs> Regular old Andy <laughs> shit there. <laughs> that's that's why I keep the mics muted when we first start. It's uh, uh, just to be sure. Well, you know, for the classic Andy stuff to not. Uh, as long as I'm just saying pressure. things about, you know, like rap and Easy E and not right. talking about, you know, people, people that I <laughs> don't like, you know, and then we're okay. We could do a whole separate podcast for that, <sighs> man. <laughs> then you would Slide have to bleep up. a lot uh, of shit. <laughs> It'd be it, funny. You bleep all the names yeah. and let people guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We'll be bleeping everybody. Who's a douchebag? <laughs> <laughs> the Bag of Dicks Award. Yep. It might just be the Bag of Dicks Award podcast. There we go. The whole, Maybe we just do a whole different podcast. The whole about, podcast is just that. You're a dick. <laughs> so hopefully everything's working all right. It seems to be. All right. And good, uh, good. You Hello, just, everyone. Hello. Well, you, you didn't do well. Your, hello well, there. And for those of you that are new, uh, I'm Robert with Fiddleback Outpost and, and Knife Outpost and all the other outpost, outpost stuff. And stuff. this is the one and only Andy Roy, Fiddleback That's Forge right. fame, which you see right. uh, some of his knives laid out here and then some knives that don't belong to him. And uh, these are going up for sale on Friday. We'll talk about that. And uh, these two of these are already on the site, and two of these are collector's items from a great friend of his. We'll Which talk will about that too. Not be offered for sale. They will not be for sale. At probably least not ever while, while you're alive. Alive. Yeah. Yes. So, got that going on, and then uh, you just got back uh, from Track Rock. But before we talked about that, I wanted to kind of give a shout out to just our general community that we are lucky enough to do business with. Yeah. Because. They're freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, I love this community. I really Yeah. Do. It's, it's you know, last week we had an issue on fiddlebackoutpost.com where um, I did a post about it, which I, I did not want to do because mm-hmm. um, it makes us look bad that something's wrong with the site, right? But it was totally outside of my control. Apparently last week for a lot of the country or a lot of the people out of the country, I'm not even sure who couldn't see it, but uh, there was a bunch of people that couldn't see the website at all. It wouldn't load at all. So there's obviously no way to let me know it's not loading for you because you can't go on there and hit the contact us page because there is no page. Hmm. But anyway, um, but I had a guy that, that reached out, was in the military, and he was using a, he was overseas. I uh, won't say where. I don't know if it's relevant or not, but uh, um, he was using a VPN. I thought maybe that was the problem. That's where you dial in and make it look like you're in the United States when you're not. That well, wasn't the problem. It wasn't just him. Um, and we were down about 40% on traffic last week. Wow. It seems to be fixed now. Everybody just really came out of the woodwork. So I really, really, really appreciate all the comments on Facebook and Instagram. Let me know that for you it works and that the problem has been resolved. Um, that helps out a ton. And I appreciate that, even though it's a, a little embarrassing to put that out there. But our community is um, friggin' awesome. And even, um, you know, we had a guy, I mean, just... You know, another yet another example, right? Um, we've got a guy that uh, sent in. Let me try to get the right the right photos here before I put them up. Um, so we had a guy that has the photo is sideways, and I apologize for that, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. He sent in a picture of a new knife he picked up from Amy, which is the red one that you see there, which mm-hmm. was amazing. I love that knife when it was here. Yeah. But on top there which would have been the right had it not got spun. So just turn your head sideways. Sorry. Is that an old ass woodsman. It is an old ass woodsman. Yeah. And he was raving about how much this knife has been used and how much he loves it and how on the side you can barely make out Andy Roy on Get the, that. On the Look blade. At that. And I knew that you really enjoyed seeing knives that have been used yeah. well. Um, so I thought I'd show up, share that Damn. on the show and share that with everybody else. But Really cool, man, to That's, see to see knives that are used like that. And the old woodsman's got an ugly factor to him. That it is. I'm just amazed. So ugly. It's really, beautiful. It's, it is, boy. It's <laughs> pregnant looking. And yeah. 
wobbly looking. It was, it was definitely when you were finding your groove on the shaping. I hadn't the, really learned how to design yeah. a professional knife. In fact, the, the woodsman, the hunter, and the lady finger, and the runt all got designed in the same week. And then later on, somebody asked for a guardless lady finger. And then I redrew the lady finger, yeah. and that became the bush, the bush finger. Gotcha. And that bush finger was the very first time I took that sway out of the back, and it was just, I was like, this is a professional-looking knife. This design right. looks good. It wasn't yeah. skinny. It wasn't pregnant. It wasn't, there was a bunch yeah. of... And then that turned into of, the new version of the lady finger. And, right, and the woodsman, too, and the hunter. And the, yep. The hunter yep. got redesigned with the, took the sway out of the back and... Just did a regular drop point. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, yeah I thought you'd enjoy that. Yeah, seen, that's pretty cool, man. I, I love it. I've got a few in my collection. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, one of y'all wants to trade or uh, yeah. offers to trade me an old fiddleback, and I'll replace it with a brand new fiddleback. Yeah. You like and seeing the old stuff. get one of the ugly ones off the marketplace and into my collection. <laughs> and, well, people uh, love them old ones, man. I know. Whether you, whether you hate them or not, they, they just them. really dig... Uh, just the older stuff, man. There's just some yeah. uh, cool factor in, in getting one of those rare ones, you know. Man. So before you feel I, like I, you look, knew I, what you I were feel doing. totally honored that some of y'all are even into the old ugly ones. Um, yeah, that's amazing to me. Uh, it's, this whole ride has been just yeah. amazing, and thank yeah, you, thank I, you very much. Yeah, I'm always struck. I mean, anytime I'm kind of you know discouraged with business in general or anything mm -hmm. else, it's like, man, the people we do business with and the people in this community of the knife makers and the outdoor world and bushcrafting and all that stuff is they're so amazing. I mean, we've got a guy that's um, sending you a knife back to have, to have some work done on it, to polish it up or whatever. Uh, what do we call it? The spa treatment. Mm -hmm. And uh, he let us know he was sending it in. And, and he also was like, Hey, just in case you need some flea and tick medicine for Allison's cat, I'm a veterinarian. I'll send it to you. And I was like, Man, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and then told him about the kitten's problems. I don't know if we've talked about that on here, if you even I don't know if we care to, either. but that basically cat is they a, can't that walk. That cat is a nice nightmare. <laughs> Allison and her crazy, <laughs> wild, feral cat mama. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But while we're talking about the community, good. let's talk about something important. Let's talk about Greg. because Please do, because I don't know the uh, updates on what's going on. You know, Greg and TJ and people that I consider family yeah. uh, were supposed to come down to track rock and they didn't. Yeah. Which we talked about last week, which we jokingly, talked about last course, week and you know, kind of joked about it and everything. But it turns out Greg was really, really sick and was in the hospital for 30 days. What? Yes. So, uh, and didn't, didn't, didn't catch on. whatever he was sick with until it was almost too late. He, Greg almost, almost went under, you know what I mean? So I'm, Really worried about Greg and praying for Greg and getting better. Though. Please out there in the community. Yeah, yeah, he's out of the hospital now. I hear, you know. But please pray for my friend Greg, who's just one of the sweetest, nicest guys yeah. you'll ever meet. One hundred percent. Just absolutely a caring, giving, loving friend. And uh, he surprises so, us every year with Christmas yeah. presents. So he was in the I hospital mean, for thirty awesome days, dude. and TJ is doing a bunch of raffles. Uh, one of the raffles is Fiddleback for a Fiddleback Forge page. knife, and um, that knife is going to be raffled off. And then I've donated. I let TJ today. I sent him a picture of all my Blade Show knives and let him take his pick of any of those, and he'll be raffling that one off as well. Cool. So just anything you guys can do from prayers to, to buying a spot in these, in these raffles, uh, and don't mention the word raffle. Yeah, I think, I think TJ has been using the word the waffle. Yeah, we have to get that past the liver, liberals with a yeah, secret word called waffle. Yeah, because he's doing it on, on Facebook yeah. over on the Fiddlebacks, Fiddleback Fanatics, Fanatics page. page yes. Which the is page a fan that, page. Uh, the page that... The f Page that we get together and shoot the shit on Facebook is Fiddleback Fanatics. Please yep. go join Fiddleback Fanatics and hang out at the page. I post a lot of stuff there. Yep. Generally sign up the group buys there. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm incredibly worried about Greg. He's a good friend and really. And are we, are we free to say what, it, what exactly the issue was or we, we don't not know or we're me. not going to say, okay. It's not up to me. I, know, I didn't know. If I know, but it not. just doesn't seem like my place. place yeah, I didn't know if it was public or not. Say 
Yeah, I don't see anybody uh, saying But anyway, he had a health concern, and it just about killed him. You know, take Hell's health serious. Yeah. Uh, don't put off going to the doctor. I do it all the time, but... Yeah, I, I, I don't. Had the same, you know, yeah. last year with putting something off I shouldn't have and ended up uh, pretty sick from it with the, yeah. with the blood clot issue. Yeah, we're getting old like now. That. I'm 51. It sucks. I think I think Greg's right about my age. It's yeah. it's too young too young to go, and yeah, yeah. I haven't had enough time with Greg yet. So, uh, yeah, I, I really course. hope he gets better quickly. And one hundred percent, yeah, maybe can make the survival weekend. They were supposed to come down for that, but I, you know, I don't want to pressure. They right, can't right, come. Right. They can't come. I still love them. Yeah, yeah. man, that's um, Greg. I hope you get better, man. Yeah. Um, if you need anything, yeah, obviously both of us are back. maybe he both of us are one hundred percent here. You know that, um, man. I hate hearing that. There's there's been a lot of that kind of thing lately. Let's see what TJ said. And uh, I haven't heard from him yet. He's working his butt off. Yeah, uh, and T, TJ was. You may remember. I think it was episode eight, so a little over a month ago now, which seems like yesterday. But um, TJ was in. He was our first guest on the podcast, and then. Also, he was uh, the first student to go through the newly founded Fiddleback University program, um, which I think we've got nailed down at this point with the with the two types the two of classes. The two-day class is nailed down. Yeah, two-day class, and then there's a one-day knife-making experience that we're still kind of working out a couple details only on the side of kind of what models you're allowed to make. Uh, we've well, had some question with that. With We're uh, not really so much working it out as people are asking for stuff outside the things bounds. that there's, it's just not possible to do in a day. Yeah. Um, and get you know, the results. The, the idea for. behind the class was to teach you the basics of grinding and the basics of making a knife. And it has to be a knife that we can complete in that one, you know, one day time period. And so this week's um, uh, question was, whether we can do uh, one of the larger knives, and it's a large knife. With yeah, it was a, wide, a camp muck. Camp yeah. muck. It's got a wide blade. It, it takes a lot more, a lot more work. Um, no, we, we yeah. can't. We can't do that in one day. It's just not going to work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't meant to be um, the, and, the larger, and the more difficult. Have a, have a swooping kind of a grind on them that is, you know, this this right here is the kind of knife you can do in the class. This is a handyman. Uh, hiking buddies, handyman. It, it, three and a half or four inch blades, narrow ones. Maybe up to the recluse. Right. But really the, the hiking buddy, handyman size factor, that's what we can do in the class. And you can really learn a lot. Otherwise, uh, I think you're going to wind up just watching me do. Instead the, of the, the experience whole, of doing it. The whole thing. Yeah. Because you've got to fix it um, to get yeah. it done in time enough for them to have yeah. a result you're proud of. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe somebody just wants to come in and watch me make a knife. But it's, it's not going to be, <laughs> you know, the bigger, more complicated the knife you make, hey, the maybe, more Maybe you I can be on OnlyFans to, after all. <laughs> yeah, right. The more I can, I have to go at regular mm-hmm. speed. I can't, I can't slow down and show you carefully. And I've got to right. just bang, 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 bang. Because that's that the way you're used to time doing, frame yeah. to get... Um, one of those knives done. So yeah, yeah, we got to limit it. So it was never meant for. Yeah. So basically we're looking and, at, and, you know, then you want to go up to the camp muck and then the next guy wants to go up to the Duke and then right. the next guy wants to go up to the Bishop and uh, yeah. no, no, I'm not interested <laughs> in that job. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely well, it, it, not. Well, it I, I do this it. to the apprentices too, by the way. Uh, they'll come in and they'll want to make a big old Bowie knife or some big giant knife. And nope. We're going to make a Puko knife, and you're going to make 10 Puko knives. If you're my apprentice, you make 10 identical Puko knives before I let you move on to anything else. Yeah. And um, by that time, you get to, A, learn all the ins and outs, all the steps. The basics. You You get to finish one, and then you get to finish 10. And then by the 10th one, you get to see all that progress. And your family all has a knife. You've given away a knife that wasn't right. hard or, you know, whatever. Right. And then you can start doing whatever you want to do. But the first 10 knives, if you're an apprentice of mine, is going to be a Puko knife. Right. Yeah. So. Something a little more simple, drop point, something like that. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, there we go. There's yeah. a question. That, me- that means it's actually working. It's actually working, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of 
course, yeah. of course, Josh wants to do that. The, Josh, the, the difference is, is Josh. This is, can this is not trying that. to be kind of offensive to Josh, <laughs> but in the two day class, we probably would only get two knife steps done because of the talking. <laughs> <laughs> My friend Josh here, y'all from he's, Edge Nice Words, is a talker. He'll have a conversation yeah, with you. He's a conversationalist. For sure, for yes, sure. he is. And uh, but he's my, also very shy, know, which is a, which is an odd pairing. Because I've got, never seen the shy part. Yeah. Well, all I, mean, I see is just, the, yeah. all I see is the talking part. <laughs> <laughs> he will talk to you. Yes, he will talk to you. Yes, for so sure. He's a talker now. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if we'd get. It'd have to be like a six day class. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be, and great. you would have to put a mask and, and a muzzle on him. For, Real expensive, for part of. and we're not going to do we're, the Japanese katana. We're going to do we're right about hiking buddy size, buddy. <laughs> letter opener. I can make a katana. A letter opener. Real tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the the difference is is for those of you that don't know, uh, Josh with Edge Knife Works can he can make one anyway. Yeah, he better, make his own damn knife. better than anybody yeah. probably I know. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. that's that's good though. I'll I'm, just, I'm sure you'll I'll have just, somebody ask. I'll just drink beer and watch him make the damn knife, <laughs> <laughs> and make make fun of hollow grinds while you're at it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Josh likes a hollow grind. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Well, yeah. Unless you're Andy. I guess every once in a while, a straight man makes a hollow ground knife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe <laughs> he said he would. He wouldn't get past design theory and layout. <laughs> Right, it would be a theory. Yeah. We'll have to have a uh, nine. Yeah, I'd have to have. I'd have to have fishing rules. Yeah, you know, and we. I'd come in nine a.m. Twelve pack. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Josh. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and design a katana looking yeah. puko size knife. There you go. I'm going to do that now. There you go. Do it. Yeah, I'll have to do it while we're on the show because Josh will have one done <laughs> before I'm done with the show. <laughs> But yeah, that's my idea, sure, Josh, sure. you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Got to let Andy have his, have his dues there. <laughs> you can make the small one and he can make a full-size version. Yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. make the full-size. We, we do them as a set. You know, guys yeah. need to collaborate on handle material yeah. <laughs> materials. Yeah. We can do it as a set. that will be great. <laughs> Big old stock removable katana. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, he'd probably hammer one out. I can't I can't hammer yeah. stuff, y'all. My hands just lock up if I use that hammer for they, more they, than about ten minutes. They don't hammer. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not into the hammering. Which but is, I like to nail. Love... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the streets, but that's one of his lyrics. <laughs> the streets. <laughs> yes. I haven't heard of the streets, I don't think. British hot uh, rap. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't like to hammer, but I like to nail. <laughs> I'm up for that. <laughs> Anything that sounds like Peaky Blinders. Should we do a knife swap at Blade Show? That sounds kind of out of control. Maybe we should do that. I don't know. I don't know if it's a good idea. Maybe we'll get some other people to... to uh, Way in on that. Is this like athletes trading their jerseys? Is that what we're? I don't around? know, man. You get like twenty guys in, and it's a knife swap. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, how would you decide? It had to be like a. Well, what's that It'd thing be like they do one at of Christmas those Christmas you, things, the like Secret Santa is it, things? Is it the White Elephant or what is the thing? Where I don't it's, know. That sounds racist. I don't, I don't know. I don't talk. I mean, about, it probably is. I don't talk about elephants that way. <laughs> I like all of the color we, we elephants. Accept all color elephants. <laughs> Pink ones like Dumbo. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Nitro V Katana. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's crazy enough to do that. Yep. I dare yep. you. I double dog dare you. Yep. I triple demon double dog dare we'll, you. We'll hang it. To we'll, make a we'll hang it right Nitro here. V Katana. Yeah, we'll hang it right here. Oh, yeah. Here. It'll Every be a show. rocking chair rail. <laughs> 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 for sure. Yeah. For sure. Oh, speaking the of... The joke there for you non-knife-making people is that AEBL and all of the AEBL variants, including Nitro V, love to warp. <laughs> so if you made a four-foot-long one, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have a rocking chair real. <laughs> you're going to regret life yeah. decisions. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So speaking of... Uh, we'll get a comment here. I'll, I'll go with that first. Knife swap would be real fun. Yep. I don't, I don't make any knives, so I can't get in on that. That's right. I can help That's talk right. about it. That's right. You non-knife <laughs> makers are fucked. I, <laughs> I mean, I can throw one in. I can go <laughs> make one. just for us knife makers. 
Now I'm, the idea's starting to swirl the toilet drain there here. I'm go. loving it. There you go. Here we go. <laughs> Might do this thing. So speaking of katanas that he was talking about, mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a, a little shout out to a show that I've been watching. Okay. That everybody needs to check out because right. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. And it's on Hulu. I think it's FX Network, but you can watch it on Hulu. Shogun. Okay. I haven't seen it. I've heard it's, somebody else say it. All I'm going to say, real good. All right. uh, I hope you like subtitles because that's a requirement. Actually, it's not. If you watch you it on Hulu, you can, it. Well, you can watch the English dub version. Oh, but I wouldn't recommend real that. Real bad. Yeah, just read. Although it is kind of funny to watch just that read. stuff. <laughs> just go ahead and read. Some some of my compatriots here in the South don't read good. <laughs> we don't read good. <laughs> y- Yaka, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Haka, what? Moto, who? Yeah. So while we're also still not quite off of talking about the knife community, I'm going to talk about something that happened to me at Track Rock Please last do. Last week. Yeah. Well, give us the full recap of Track Rock. But oh, well, Track we'll Rock definitely... was awesome. Showed up on Thursday. I got there by 1. <laughs> Had my tent set up by like 3 or 3.30. It was great. So I got a tent that connects to the back of my 4Runner. And I got a mattress that's made to fit the back of the 4Runner. Yeah. And, of course, the site had electricity. So I had an electric blanket on top of the mattress <laughs> under my wool blanket, my army blanket. And, there are and so, then a regular there are so set, many hardcore outdoors. A regular set right of now. double bed sheets, you know, so I had right. a fitted sheet and a flat sheet and a quilt. Man, I slept like a king. <laughs> I mean, I don't even ever want to stay in a hotel again. Right. You know, um, couldn't get Leah to come, but I don't think she really understood the level of comfort. I mean, I would turn that electric blanket on like an hour before bedtime. <laughs> and when I, when I got in there, there was no toes shivering. There was... I, I felt, and it was enough to warm the whole car. I didn't, I didn't need, and I turned it off as soon as I got in. That was enough for yeah. the whole night. So the only thing you're missing is really oh, awesome. housekeeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I need Sharon Stone. Was that Sharon Stone? No, it's the know. one that looked like her. So, well, the but one wasn't her. Reference I was thinking of was uh, was David Spade and Chris Farley, where oh. he's like uh, David oh. Spade's pranking him or whatever. So, was Tommy Boy? Was that the movie? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. yeah. But that came the from the was. previous movie. With that Australian hammer knocker with the knife. That's not a knife. This is a knife. Uh, Dundee? Yeah. That's yeah, the, that wasn't the actress. That wasn't that, Sharon I Stone. No, I don't remember her I name. Don't, I don't know if she was relevant enough. Nice looking butt. That. Did that offend yeah. you? I liked her butt. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever color elephant it was. That's right. <laughs> she got that white elephant butt. <laughs> <laughs> you don't discriminate. <laughs> Alrighty then. So back to Track Rock. Yep. At Track Rock, my friend Jerry McJilton, who has been helping Mrs. Denise Bradley liquidate uh, Dennis Bradley's tools and this and that. When did when did Dennis pass away? Uh, might have been around a year back, yeah. maybe, maybe a year and a half. But Dennis Dennis was one of the knife makers that helped me get into the 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 big knife making guild. Uh, he was part of the Georgia Guild and then just mentored me and mentored me. He, yeah. was, he was already in that, and he was an amazing knife maker. And we would hang out, and he would show me this knife right here every time we hung out. And this is knife is made by James Poplin. Uh, James Poplin, of course, was the guy that started Pop's Knife Supply and who contacted me to see if I wanted to buy Pop's Knife Supply right. when he wanted to retire. And both men have passed since then. And James is probably the cleanest knife maker that I've ever, of any knife maker I've ever known. Right. Just, at least personally. I mean, I know there's there's some real masters out there. And, right. But James is among any master. <laughs> uh, I already had one in my collection. And, I mean, it's just so clean, it makes your teeth hurt. A lot of guys mirror polish, and their mirror polishes look like shit. <laughs> Hot take, incoming. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, a lot of you guys mirror polish, and you've got mirror polished in scratches. Uh, yeah. James, there is no flaw mirror polish. There's right. no buffed-in flaws. Um, there's no buffed-in areas that take away from sharp transitions. Uh, his knives are clean as can be. Anyway, Dennis had this one. He had this one before I had mine. 
and used to tease me about it. Oh, look what I got. Look what I got. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I made it. I made it do the wave. Remember that when you were a kid? <laughs> Where it looks like it's moving. It looks like it's doing It probably really does on camera. Wave. Anyway, um, but his wife gave this to Jerry McJilden to give to me, and he passed it to me at Tra- Track Rock. And it just it just blows me away. I just feel completely blessed. Yeah. And it just it just blows me away. So yeah, it's pretty cool. pretty amazing experience just to be handed it to it. And the sheath that was with it was made by Mr. Dennis Bradley. So uh, you know, these are two guys that have mentored me. James took call after call after call and then watched me you know, build a business and then called me and said, I know you can run a business and I don't want this to go to my competitors and right. I want you to buy it. And that's when I got the group of guys together right? that currently own pops knife supply and we all bought it together. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big loss. I'm, and I'm kind of curious, you know, is your perspective now after being, you know, in knife making for, you know, the last 10 years or over 10 years now, 15, 15, Mm-hmm. I was thinking it was 12, but you're right. It's uh, 15 years. That's a long time. Yep. Um, but I'm kind of curious as to, as to kind of what your take is on how the knife community has changed now that it, it's kind of changing the generation almost. So it's, uh, you know, you're passing down your knowledge, obviously, with, with the classes and having so many apprentices and, and influencing at least the Georgia knife making community far more than you would probably take credit for or accept credit for. But right. I've heard it enough times from enough people outside of you that I'll, I'll kind of toot your horn on that, I guess. But yeah, um, I I but I'm kind of wondering what you see happening in the knife world. I think the as biggest that change in the knife the world generation. since I've been involved in the knife world is the show Forge and Fire. Yeah. Which is an idiotic show. <laughs> uh, the whole show is stupid. Um, which Josh has been on there, not to say it was, it was, it was uh, good when Josh was on it. Yeah. Well, the, the, the challenges are silly. It's a TV show. Right. So at the end of each day, they take a picture of each of the people making knives. And then the next morning they make them up to look like they look the day before and continue filming the show. It's a TV show. It's not, it's not what you, it's not, not, and then the, the, the testing and everything is just ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's meant uh, to be hyperbolic. If you hit a knife with a, a clay pot with a knife, there's nothing that tells you anything. You don't get any information about the knife. <laughs> the clay pot thickness is varies. The hardness of the clay varies. And who the hell hits a yeah. clay pot with a knife? So the whole, the whole show is ridiculous. But right. it really, when I started making knives and went full-time, I went full-time two years in. And when that happened to me, uh, I would tell people, my wife has a real job. She's super <laughs> employable. Hi, Leah. Um, and we would go to, you know, events and stuff and at work events. And I'd tell people I'm a knife maker. And they'd look at me like, he's unemployed. Right. Uh, and nowadays, everyone knows a knife maker. Yeah. Every, my yeah. uncle does that. Yeah. Every time I say it, oh, I got a cousin that does that. Oh, yeah. my best friend does yeah. that. And that's because of Fortune Fire. Yeah. And we used to get calls at Pops. I and mean, we got a call once that we had started, we had taken over Pops for like a month. Right. And this guy calls up and he goes, I need some advice. I was like, okay. And he goes, I've been making knives for like two months and I've got a one by 42 grinder and a railroad track anvil. All right. And I, I just got accepted onto Forged and Fire. Do you think I have enough equipment? And I was like, <laughs> No, and I don't think you need to worry about it. You're the comic relief on the show. Right. You know, they have to have yeah. a dumbass you're the, you're the that, one that's gonna drop that out just first. keeps running into the wall like that, right. like that wind-up train when you yeah. were a kid. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's the biggest change in knife making, yeah. and I, I don't know if it's positive. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would argue that it has been on one respect of um, introducing the public to knife makers or having something in their mind that, that lends to the credibility of a maker like Josh, I know that it, it's helped him. Um, I know when we first introduced him, uh, you know, for knife outpost right. and putting on his knives, we talked about him being unfortunate in fire and it lends, it lends at least some recognized, recognized, oh, yeah. you know, oh, goodness. And there's a culture, yeah. you know, they have all these, uh, get togethers and everything. Yeah. And, well, and then we know, I mean, how many, know. how many people that yeah. have been on there, Paul Brock, which I, I, 
Paul, absolute open invitation to be on here. Amazing yeah. knife maker. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, he, he was on the show and I think actually because of the, the episode, I haven't actually seen, you know, uh, that many episodes of it. I watched the one Paul was on. I've seen. I've one seen like three Josh episodes. On. Like if, if there's I don't a know friend the of mine on it, I watch it. I watched yeah, the Liam Hoffman same. episode. Hey yeah. Liam, I've yeah. watched uh, Paul. And I Liam watched... Hoffman is definitely not the comic relief on that show. No, no, he went in there and all. kicked everybody's ass. Yeah, you know. Yeah, He's that was amazing. it. Was funny. There was a ABS Mastersmith on his yeah. episode going. That little kid's not going to beat yeah. me and talking shit. And Liam kicked his ass. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. You're not going to out hammer Liam. Yeah. Hoffman. But that's the TV drama part of it. That's what's good about. But, but I think to, you know, you know back know. to your back to your point about the the you know always having the the one on the show that's the comic relief and always messes everything up, bangs their head against the wall. I actually think looking back at the episode Paul was on, I think that's why he didn't make it according to what we could see on on screen, right? Because you don't see everything that goes on. But he's so nice. Yeah, he's so nice he and so helpful. Nice, yeah. To anybody that wants to learn, yeah. that he would not allow that guy to fail, yeah. and he was like helping him to his own detriment and working yeah. on his thing. That's Paul. Uh, he, that in that, a that's, nutshell. That's Paul in a nutshell. Great. He showed up at my shop when I was. I had actually just rented a place, and he showed up and he's like, "Let me help you learn to make folders because I think you'd be the best folder maker." Right. And boy, he was just good. I, yeah. I love the guy. You yeah. Know? yeah. I'd give a kidney for Paul. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's yeah. always at all the but events. I think that's the biggest change in knife making, and in my opinion, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Just like I think the ABS is yeah. totally ridiculous. But I think the uh, I think the ABS is totally ridiculous. This is the the ABS American Bladesmith Society. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous. I think their testing is ridiculous. The bending a knife 90, 90 degrees is ridiculous. I think, I don't know. I, I, we had people come into pops. After they had been to the um, training yeah. that they have set up and in, in Arkansas, and they're still teaching edge packing. If you want a good knife, get a stock removal knife. It's never yeah. been overheated. The carbon's not on the floor around it's the anvil. Stress, stress it's never been hit times. with a hammer. Yeah. You never have made steel stronger hitting it with a hammer. And you can disagree with me all you want, and if you do, you're just on the wrong side of that argument. Well, it's it's <laughs> it's not only the hammer striking; it's also the heating, it's cooling, constant heating, heating cooling, to critical, heating, heated cooling. to critical, heated yeah. to critical, heated to critical. Look at the carbon flaking off; it's all over the yeah, floor. Yeah, you know, you're hitting it with the steel brush yeah. to get it off. You ever watch somebody make Damascus and just watch the carbon just flaking off of that yeah, yeah, shit? Yeah. And don't know what steel. Sometimes after at it's the made. edge, <laughs> it's just such a fad. I, yeah. And then you see beginning makers. <laughs> That don't know shit about how to make a pretty knife. Yeah, and they're using and Damascus. they're using Damascus. They have because to, you know, cool. and uh, you know, just yeah. Yeah, and it's mangled Damascus. Yeah. Well, My, do you do you think there's an exception when you look at stuff like like Josh, for instance? Not to not to throw too much in Josh. I just know he's watching. Um, he well, he makes his own Damascus, which is another level anyway. But he's not buying it already made most of the time anyway. Um, but he does a lot with like San Mai and things like that, where you know what's on the edge because it's the center of that. Josh is, there is an exception really, that? really smart, and yes. he knows how Incredible. to make a knife. Yeah, you know, it's not like he's saying, "Oh, I want the, you know, I want to make a Kumai knife for yeah, my yeah. first knife." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> his is his is function first for sure. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's just. A, and he's also heavily Look, inspired I, I think, Japanese I, style. I think there's a lot of great yeah. makers that have forged knives through the years. And the masters in the ABS are amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. I just think the club is ridiculous. Well, I mean, you had mentioned like not not liking the fact that you don't know what's on the edge because you've got all the, That's my all thing the waves with Damascus. and everything. I would never. With something Look, like a sand mine, you know what's in it because you know what Let's say the aliens attack or the zombies attack right. or whatever. And you've got to pick a piece of equipment and walk out of your house. If you walk out of your house with a Damascus knife... You're a dumbass, You're and when do. that thing fails while the zombie's attacking you, uh, you deserve it. Yeah. You voted for that shit. <laughs> Hot take, zombie apocalypse. Uh, so it's just, I, I just don't, I've never been a, um, fan a big, of Damascus. big fan of Damascus. But does that alleviate, at least alleviate part of the, because I know like in traditional Japanese swords and things like that, they didn't have a lot of great steel or the steel wasn't good for being banged against other they steel. Were so folding the, and forge welding to yeah. get the carbon in the steel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the iron. Yeah. They were putting the I don't know. It uh, you know, I don't have to be a super expert. I I want a knife. You know, I just it's just not what I'm into. 
Yeah. That's not what I'm into. Yeah. And I think today's perception that has come from that TV show that, you know, if it's not forged, it's not a good knife. Yeah. Is Nonsense. ridiculous. Yeah. 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 And wrong. See, I just love when you give your opinions because we just get a ton of comments when I do short videos out of this. Good. <laughs> Good. There's if, a few. If take, I ever have time, there's, to do there's it. a few takes in there. Then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. There's a there's a few in there for this sure. This one, this one, you should get a few of these. Yeah. And uh, further announcements. You mentioned um, earlier. You mentioned the the fiddleback user weekend. The survival weekend up. is really coming. Yeah. Is getting up to speed. And, and Kevin, sorry, Kevin, if you're watching, I, I didn't. We haven't posted the the he sends a post about. About the weekend, a blog post, and and I just haven't got to it. That's oh well, totally you need to get me. to it. Yeah, because well, I mean, people are going to read Day it. Week. That's the whole point. I don't 100%. want it posted on Memorial Day weekend. I'm trying to get people to come to the thing. So. I was I wasn't going to do it any later than the day before. Oh well, you know, good. I mean, well, jump on that nerd and uh, Kevin. You, if you sent that to me, I didn't see it. I obviously he owe did you, copy you on it as well. I obviously owe you some money, <laughs> so I'll have to get you a check. He, he did copy you on that as well, so. Not only my fault. See, okay, he, he, has, he just hasn't figured out he needs to include Allison on it. That's when, uh, that's when it doesn't get jumped. It goes right. to my email with the five hundred other ones. She yeah. looks at a smaller number of them. So, so Allison babysits Robert all day. No, yeah. so no, but she definitely babysits <laughs> everything that I drop for sure. That's, okay, uh, all righty. Just- <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about these knives because I got a haircut appointment. Yeah, I've got to get to. And just kind of a side note, out of control. guys, make sure you comment and let us know if the knives are getting in focus or not. I can see screens here, but not super well. Um, but I changed that camera's setting, so you may have been in and out of focus this entire time. I don't know. Um, but let us know if Andy's been in good enough focus for the show, and let us know if the knives are in focus better than usual. I'm still trying to work out kind of the best way to show these, but. It's a podcast, so eyeballs and faces come first. All right, here we go. So we're going to talk about this first knife. It's a Petit Oiseau. So while I was in Texas at Blade Show, there's a there's a couple of old Cajun guys that come around my table all the time, and I handed the knife to them and I told them I named that knife the Petit Oiseau, and we all had a big laugh because Petit Oiseau. Uh, Carrie Buckles says, when do we see hot sauce on the show? This is a knife show, Carrie Buckles. Shit. Although I did buy yeah. some some plants today. My seedlings have faltered this year. But I bought my plants today, and I got scorpions and ghosts right. and cayenne and sashitos and uh, um, what else? Scorpion. Whatever. I got, I got my peppers and I got my tomatoes today. Yeah. So that's All my right. gardening thing. But anyway, the Petit Oiseau. Uh, in Cajun French... Petit oiseau means little little bird, but, but it's, it's used to mean little penis. <laughs> Women will tease men about the petit oiseau. <laughs> so I handed the knife to them, and I told them I named it the petit oiseau. It's and they, just cold in here. They just started laughing. They started laughing. This one is, um, let's see, this one's 8670. It's box elder burl. Yeah, it's got a high grind, so it's, it's hard to tell. Red box elder burl, and it's got red and white so I think, racing stripes. I think that one is the same as It just my didn't Esquire. come off the same block, no, for but sure. It's the for same, sure. But it's the same stuff. Well, aren't you cool? So, I think so, anyway. Well, not the cool part, the knife part. You are right. That's box elder burl as well. And it is dyed red. So this is red dyed box elder burl. You just don't want to show that one because it it's candy grind. I mean, you don't want people asking cool. you about well, it. Well, he can sell it right away. That's candy grind's hot. <laughs> I just can't get another one. All right. Next up is this handyman. We showed you guys this knife earlier in the show. Gorgeous Bloodwood. Uh, this is Bloodwood. I love using Bloodwood. Uh, it's hard and it's got a tight grain structure and it just does knives really. And it has well. a toyance to it too. I don't know if it, yeah, it definitely won't a, pick up on the camera. It's but got a it, shimmeriness, it which means dances in the yeah, light. Yeah. The, so this one's got green and white racing stripes and a green mosaic pin, a green uh, uh, beauty mark pin, and it's eighty six seventy. Yeah, those racing stripes are pretty awesome on that. Yeah, yeah, those racing. And see, like, like personally, if you were having me lay out handle materials, mm-hmm. I would never put green with that. I don't know why. I just wouldn't. Boy, does it, it ever pop against? But man, it, it looks good. Yeah, it I've, looks I've really learned good. that sometimes it's not. Um, 
it's not about complimenting. It's about contrast. Contrast. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And those are opposite colors too. So yep. the red and green. Yep, so yep, yep. fun, useless fact of the week, uh, in case you're, you might be interested in back in the old days, at least operating rooms used to be painted, uh, that green color, that same as the, the hospital gowns that you see. Because when you stare at blood during a surgery for a long period of time and you look at white walls, they turn that color green anyway because your eyes automatically hmm. adjust to the opposite of what you've been staring at. Interesting. So they went ahead and painted the walls and their outfits that way so that it didn't mess with the surgeon's eyesight when they were doing surgery. So useless fact of the day. Have fun with that if you must. We've got a long comment. Yeah. Would you yeah. read that? Let me. It could be a forging person that that is upset that I'm not into that shit. Uh, yes, carry buckles. They do have taper tangs. Um, all of the knives today have taper tangs. So next knife up. I'll put that one up there. Next. And then knife. we had, we had one before that just kind of tooting your horn a little yeah, bit. That was, that was Joey Peters. Hey Joey. Yeah. Learned a lot from you and, uh, wants to do the knife swap, but doesn't think he's good enough for it. Mm. So that's, that's his comment mm. there. That's yeah. the problem with a knife swap is setting a standard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then what do you do? Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Not that I think your knives aren't good enough, Joey. I've seen <laughs> tons and tons of improvement in Joey's knives. Um, next up, we have a Bushcrafter Junior. That thing's gorgeous. Yeah, this one is ebony. We had a guy not long ago send me a message, and he's into ebony. So I cut up a, a big old board of ebony, and this is it. Um, it's the Bushcrafter Junior. This one is a two. It, uh, it's five thirty seconds a two, if you can believe that. And then it's got big giant orange and white racing stripes and an orange, uh, beauty mark pen. All right. So it's pretty knife. Pretty it's, knife. It's give me, give me the, awesome. yeah, the comment. So the comment, uh, let okay. me put it up here. It's, it's a long one, but uh -huh. I, I'll give you the, the gist of it. Cause okay. I don't know if you can. I think there's a way I can make that bigger, but uh, just tell me, uh, give me a synopsis. Uh, yeah, it ain't I can't see it from here. Yeah, it's so the synopsis is he's asking, does it does it irritate you in any way uh, to pour so much work and everything into making sure your heat treats perfect and the knife is perfect and everything functionally is great, only to have somebody treat it like a safe queen and not use it at all and just collect it and it has all that waste he put it as wasted potential basically no bill Does that because you? because i make knives as a business and to sell knives and there's a couple of guys that i know they're very good friends that have collections that are at in the hundreds over or around 500 knives yeah. and my business could not have survived without that kind of passion yeah and so no i i do love seeing them get used i don't know bill if you were locked looking earlier when we showed that old woodsman that's been just used and used and used, but um, I love seeing them when they get yeah. used. And you know, we had a guy break a tip off of his recently, and I fixed it for him. And I fixed it without having to change any of the patina on the knife. And I was very careful not to yeah. not to mess with the patina because the knife was really well used and broken in and it's obviously a knife he loved and carried yeah. and used and you don't want to remove the day story in and day out yeah. and you don't want to remove that story that's why i carry an a2 knife instead yeah. of a magna cut knife most of the time um uh, because i want i want that story on the blade right. you know i want to have to wipe it off you know <laughs> you know right. all this other stuff so no it, it doesn't offend me um, and I don't think my business could have survived without it. You know, that's why I repeat my designs. I've right. got, I've had, I've had guys that collected one model and yeah. have hundreds of one model. Greg that we talked about earlier. Greg, is one. Greg yeah. is one. There was another guy with the Monarchs mm -hmm. and then there was another guy with the Runts. There was a guy um, I remember too with, yeah. um, uh, what was the one that was Sneaky Pete yeah. model. There was a guy that collected yeah. those for a while. So no. No, and, and, you know, I've got knives in my collection. I'll never cut anything with these two pop knives that we had earlier, and right. I don't feel like I'm insulting his memory. I look at them and just lust over the cleanness and the skill. Yeah. And well, your, your, appreciation, of, your appreciation is going to be different anyway right. because a lot of people can only appreciate a knife because of using it yeah. to really get the full appreciation because right. to them it's a tool. Right. You as a knife maker get a different level right. of appreciation yeah. out of watching something well done in your craft. And that's or something, 
I that would be like yeah. that would be like being a car guy and going to a museum and seeing a, good a, a perfect Ferrari or something on museum floor. Yeah, it's not getting driven, but as a as a car nut, you're just like, you know, you don't want to yeah. see that, you know. And it's you got no. the different car guys too. Yeah, you know, some want to drive them all the time, some don't. But no, you know, no, the business wouldn't have worked without that. I repeat designs. You know, I've had, I've had. That's been one of the forging yeah. people. Yeah. Call my knives cookie cutter knives, because you, you know, have patterns. because I have patterns and I right. repeat my designs. But that is, if you want to stay in business as a knife maker, and I, you, know, you, you have opinion, to let each model kind of get its own. My opinion of their following. knives is the same as old Doctor Wang did to me when we were doing electrical engineering. You know, I would go and we would accomplish something, and he'd go, "Now go repeat it." If you can't repeat it, you can't do it. Yeah. So yeah, kind of like if you can't teach it, you don't know it. Kind of the whole, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if you can't explain it in, in simple terms, you don't know it well enough. Something yeah. like that. All right. All right next up, nice, I've got nice. a gorgeous recluse. Uh, once again, this one's ebony. And once, no, that one was orange. This one has the green racing stripes, green and white. And then a green beauty mark pin at the back. So three of the five this week have the green racing stripes, yeah. which is freaking awesome. Yeah. So just this, the recluse, when it's good, it's good. Yeah. I love the recluse. I've carried them for a while. They're just a good. Four inch blade. Four inch bladed. Everyday use, hard use knife. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. That one came out real pretty. And then. Bush we've got hermit. the bush hermit. This is that curly ash. I love ash. Um, curly ash, I think, beats curly maple hands down eight days of the week. There's just something about the green structure. Yeah. It's harder. It takes color just as well yeah. as maple. Well, it's got that piece that kind of goes through the center of it. So you've got you've uh, got the the curly going one way, and then the then the grain going, grain the, going the opposite yeah, way, yeah, not really perpendicular cool. to that. But yeah, you can really see it there. Look at that. This one's A2 taper tang. It's got green and white racing stripes and white Trinity pin out. Now, I do the Trinity pin out because of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yep. Just so you know, that's why I do that. Case and it's you, right there on the knife. If you didn't know, now you if know. If you didn't know, now you know. Yeah, and I put the comment up a second ago. I don't think you saw it from Kerry. All great yeah. looking Thanks, styles Carrie. and combos. Kerry's a cool guy, um, Mississippi guy. <laughs> yeah, and I really, definitely wanted to. Uh, really good knife maker, teaches it to kids all the time. So shout out to Kerry Buckles. Pops used to, you know, try to supply just a little bit of, you know, supplies for to help with his classes with the right. kids. And I was just always honored to do it. And Kerry's just a great guy. Very cool. I haven't met Kerry yet, I don't think. Kerry so. Buckles, yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a question on that. Okay. But, uh, I don't remember what it was now. I can't yeah. even imagine trying to. I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. It's, Let me try to guess. I can't. I yeah, can't either. I don't care. Whatever you say, I'm gonna say. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, totally, totally was it. <laughs> so I, I did have. Speaking of great combinations, um, there was two knives that we did not get to talk about last week that I actually posted up Friday. Okay. That I don't think a lot of people realized we're posting on Friday because we didn't talk about them. Ah, uh, they're from Amy. They're on Amy's the site nice. already, so you don't have to wait for Friday for these. Hmm. And um, They're pretty good, you they're, guys. <laughs> they're freaking awesome. She's really great at, at combinations of colors and everything. I would I would dare say she's better at color combos than you are. I would hmm. I would I would I you, would go you that. You would far. dare say that? I would dare. Hmm. I would totally dare say that. I I'll, disagree. I'll give Amy some credit. <laughs> I got to disagree. Uh, Mr. Who is it? Chevy? All right, Chevy. Why don't you do every knife with the Trinity pin out? Um, it's just to have variety. When you got a guy that's collected 500 bush boots, you really have to have a lot of variety for that collection. Yeah. And some have the Trinity and some don't. So he might buy two of those bush boots that have every aspect of the knife exactly the same, steel the same, <coughs> handle material the same liner material the same and one has a trinity and one doesn't so that's why i don't do every one that way yeah. you know and guys i mean just like a quick a quick little side note i'll put it back on the this is on the knife yeah knife. so that one is called. the uh 
Let's see. She's got this one called the Bush Baby. Oh, Bush Baby. My bad. My bad. Bush Baby. There we go. Amy makes a gorgeous knife. It's clean. Very clean. Just as clean as it can be. This one, let's see. It's a full thickness tang. The steel is AEBL stainless steel. Um, Yeah, both are stainless on those. Just gorgeous. It comes with a... Comes with a great Fantastic sheath. Fantastic sheath. Yeah. So she's a great sheath maker on top yeah, of she's being a, a she's a master sheath. So maker, if you're one so. of the few people that complain that Andy's knives don't come with sheaths already, you don't mm-hmm. like buying this separately. Yeah. You know, you've got the option of Andy's right. knives come with a sheath. That's so right. There you go. And then here is that one is the beta. The beta. And I love the beta. It's got a yes. little pregnant belly in it at, toward the back. That just fits in your hand. And if you were taking a deer, this is a perfect knife for taking a deer, in my opinion. This one's AEBL as well. Uh, uh, it's uh, Buckeye Burl. She says it's Box Elder, but it looks like Buckeye to me. It, we're probably, gonna go, is, it probably is. We're going to go with what Elder. I said. I'm pretty sure this is Buckeye Burl. I'm, I'm taking Amy's side on this one. Yeah. I'm going with what well, she said because I'm more afraid of her than you. Well... I can I can understand that, and she's wrong. <laughs> but her knife is gorgeous. Yeah, I wish she was on here so she there could we go. Yeah, she should have commented. Yeah. But that's she. That's she might be busy actually working. That's definitely California book. I oh, I, I put up the the last question we had already answered, yeah, but that yeah. did remind me of of something I wanted to kind of say. And this is goes out to the to the knife makers. So I've been selling your knives on on the site on yeah. one side or another whichever one it was yeah. this week but <laughs> the uh um but i've been selling your knives for a, a bit and the um one thing i can tell you from the experience of doing that if you are a knife maker he mentioned you know you've got to make varieties of the models and have something that you can consistently put out there i can't tell you how important that is that you not only allow your customers to become a fan of your work and your brand, but to also have your customers be able to be a fan of a particular model. And it's not just collecting and that kind of thing. Um, it, it really is just just allowing them to desire something they've seen over and over and over again and wait for it to come up. In somebody's case like Andy, you know, he's got over a hundred models. So there's a lot of times you, you want a particular knife. You've got to wait for it to come around. You want them to be able to recognize that and say, I want, I, I got, I got to have a, a hiking buddy next time one comes up or they go out and they look for hiking buddies on the second hand market, that kind of thing. That is what keeps your business going. And that is what keeps your sales going. And I cannot emphasize that enough as somebody on the sales end of the business I can't tell you how many times I've seen people just refuse to do that because they want to take the artistic approach, which I totally and completely respect. You should do that to keep your skills sharp. You should do that to put out variety. But if you can't repeat models that people can be fans of, uh, that art is not going to take you very far because you've got to have something for them to grab onto. And if something is a one-off every time you put something out, there is a select small niche market that will go after that but you are destroying your ability to sell to a larger market. So you really need to be able to have that fan base on those models. So that's my, uh, have beauty mark pins and everything else. Yeah. So he was thanking, thanking your explanation for why you have You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So the knives that we showed you, so the two from Amy, um, reminder, those are already on the site. If you want to go check those out and I actually have, if I can pull them up, let me see if I can do it without, messing it up i've actually got a couple of pictures in case it didn't show well enough Um, and if you're wondering why don't you show us these really detailed photos of all andy's knives just because i see them about 30 seconds before you do so i brought them to him today yeah and the other one's there so sorry he had plenty of time to get them in and get pictures of them while i was at pops um yeah because we would pick them up because allison picked them up like monday morning yeah but with me down in Norcross, Allison yeah. doesn't drive by that on the way to work. And no, lit- literally the well, not the pops location now, but the previous pops location that she would pick them up at, at your shop, yeah. also at the Fiddleback shop, was also there too. Um, she literally lived a mile from there. Yeah, so it was it was literally on her way into work. So she would pick them up early in the week and give us plenty of time. Um, you know, now it's a, it's a little more rushed. Andy walks in. 
you know, 30 minutes before we start the show and I'm busy setting up the show and then, uh, the knives are here. You see them. You're literally these, I, I didn't even see, I didn't even take the covers off of them. So I literally saw them as you did. Um, it's a surprise. Yeah, it's a surprise. <laughs> so that's why it's Merry important. Merry Christmas. I, I Sell figured, these. Yeah. Yeah, or <laughs> yeah. So that's why it's important that I figure out a way to show well, you. I'll shoot you in better. your pinky toe. <laughs> So You're just the re- kind of guy shoots a woman in the pinky toe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just a reminder on the knives that we showed you from Andy. If you go to knifeoutpost.com slash preview on Friday morning, you'll get to see the photos like the ones I just showed you of Amy's with all specs, pricing, everything. Um, we don't usually talk a lot about, about pricing um, yeah. when we do things just because then it, you, you have that one cheap person or the one person out there that doesn't understand custom made stuff and handmade stuff. Um, then it becomes a, a justification on why prices are the way they are versus hmm. people that know what they're looking at. They know what they're looking at. So you uh, I set my prices. I try to keep my prices while we're going to discuss it. I try to keep my prices as low as I can keep them and still make profit to bring home to the family. Yeah. And it gets harder and harder and harder, you know, especially the, these days, the yeah. more, um, half the company country votes for Democrats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which also swings back to how we started the show, which is appreciating the community and the, right. our, our customer base is yeah. amazing. And we both couldn't do what we do without them. So definitely appreciate yeah. that. And then if you want to continue that and continue to support us, hopefully, um, knifeoutpost.com slash Friday is where these post up at Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Those are going to be the ones from Andy's. You're not going to get the Pops knives, James Poplin knives oh, no. he showed you ever. No, those are mine. Um, but the two from Amy are already up, so you can check those out. And then if you want to take classes from the man himself, fiddlebackuniversity.com is where you do that business. So those are going super well and been super stoked about those. And um, I don't know if you were reading a new comment or not. Mm-mm. You just uh, nope. Are you watching the time? You got to get that. No, no, no I'm good. I'm, I'm good on time. Cool. So, but that's uh, pretty much all I had, unless right. you wanted to. Uh, well, we'll see y'all next say week. Then. Anything else? And then, so we're going to get to roll out now with the new music that I chose, which ah. we may not keep. Ah. You have to let us know whether you like the music or not. We hey. do have one last comment to squeeze in. Jersey have a great Jim. Easter. Has a, have a great Easter. Thank you, you too, Jersey I Jim. I totally forgot that it was, yeah, they snuck it in in March this year. So, this is our last Fiddleback Friday slash Fixed Blade Friday. I think we'll just call it Black Friday again before the end of the month before, yeah. before that. So, well, cool. So let us know if you like the intro outro music, the new stuff or not. And uh, I'll go ahead and roll that. All right. Right now. Y'all have a blessed week. Mm-hmm.